want to talk a little bit about how we experience boundaries, particularly related to the spiritual community. Um, I recently attended a book talk by a famous spiritual teacher, and I expected to attend a book talk and learn some tools related to her new book, because that's what was advertised. And that was the agreement. But that's not actually what happened. So as the author began talking about her book in some very basic ways, she was also psychically tuning into audience members to illustrate her points. So she would randomly focus on a person in the room and say things like, after she made her statement, you really need to learn this one. And then the person then caught off guard and of course unable to stop the train that was now coming their way, was in an awful position of whether to say no or to go along with you know, being exposed and having all their personal details psychically mined in front of an audience, which is what the teacher proceeded to do. Now, I, I didn't agree to have my energy body read on the spot. That wasn't part of the agreement. Uh, no one in the audience that I'm aware of came in with a permission slip saying that it was okay to call out and expose very personal details about their self. Unfortunately, the spiritual community is rife with this. I've experienced this so many times that when this happened to me recently, I thought I have to talk about it uh, because it's so common. Ironically, uh, the subject of this particular book that this person was speaking about was sensitivity. So here we were all gathered in a room together, um, obviously a room full of very sensitive people and a teacher who claims to be sensitive and so would know uh, the perils of being so wide open and having no skin, so to speak, which is a phrase she used. And here she was kind of violating the basic boundary of having a, you know, of our own skin. So she had no boundaries. She had no boundaries in this situation. So when we agree to form a container or a relationship, you know, whether it's a class or an event or a friendship, we are demarcating a boundary, whether we consciously and explicitly name it or not. There's an implication about a boundary. And when we go against the implied agreement of that boundary, of that container, we violate it. So containers have certain ways of operating. Uh, for instance, if I pay you to have a healing session, I am giving you permission to enter my field. I am giving you permission by virtue of the money exchange and the agreement we both know what we're getting into for you to go into my energy and give me advice and, and talk to me about issues that are really personal and meaningful and important. And these are things that I wouldn't, you know, go up to a stranger uh, on the street and talk with them about, right? So if I'm taking a class, say, on energy, on energy work, uh, I might expect that the teacher will have an exercise whereby another person will enter my field and get information as a part of that learning. And, of course, not outside of the context of that class exercise. So here are some examples of kind of poor boundaries or boundary violations that commonly occur with spiritual type people or in spiritual settings or spiritual communities. Um, for instance, you meet a new person for tea to talk about their work uh, in an informal way and they start reading your past life. Or you talk on the phone to a friend, as a friend, and they put on their healer hat and they try and fix you. So they start treating you as more of a client. A teacher may tell you that you have a particular issue 
and yet you only seem to have that issue around her because it's actually her or his issue. Or a person in a class that you're attending takes a comment you make to the class personally and talks about it to other class members in front of you as though you are not there. Or you go on a first date, find out your date's birth data, birth information, and start interpreting their chart on the spot without their permission or understanding of what's happening. Or maybe an old friend with whom you have history wants an astrology session from you, and you give it to them. Now, when you cross agreements or roles with someone, you are at risk of violating a boundary. So we have these roles, and it's the one usually we enter into first with a person. So almost always, friends cannot be clients. Friends cannot be teachers. Teachers cannot be friends. Colleagues cannot be clients. Lovers cannot be clients. And so on. So how do we know when a boundary has been trespassed? We are always alerted to our boundaries by how we feel. Your boundaries will be different from mine. So they're highly personal and highly specialized. Um, But you will always know how you violated a boundary or if a let, let's just leave it at how you've vi- violated your own boundary because this puts the power in your hands where it should be. Um, and it's, it's simple. If something feels good to you and you're doing it, it's not a boundary violation so you can keep doing it. If something feels bad and you go along with it anyhow, it is a boundary violation and you're violating your own boundary. And spiritual teacher Teal Swan has a great video on YouTube about boundaries uh, that applies across the board to all of your relationships. So just uh, Google YouTube boundaries teal swan and you'll find that amazing video. So what will you do when this happens? What, What can you do? So first you commit to feeling your feelings and naming that this feels wrong to you. This feels bad. It feels icky. Yuck. And this is so important because it's common for people to excuse bad boundaries, to compromise their own self-integrity rather than to name it. And so it's a radical act to say this doesn't feel good. Oftentimes, it's just radical to do that. It doesn't feel good to me. And it feels like a boundary violation. And it's not necessarily to art- necessary to articulate this to the other person. It's not your job to be the boundary police. It's your job to protect your true self. It's your job to learn how to be the guardian and the caretaker of your own personal space. So you do this for you. It's how you lovingly care for yourself. So what you do is you notice how you feel in your body. And you, you sink into your body, not your mind and its chatter, because your mind can make excuses and your mind can say, oh, this isn't really happening. Your body is your portal to consciousness. So when I was sitting in this book talk, I witnessed this happening and I could feel in my body her jumping into others' energy without permission. And this made my body feel unsafe. And the longer I sat there, the more my anxiety built. And I knew at that point that I had to walk away or I would violate my own boundary by staying in a situation that felt uncomfortable to me. So walking away and saying no is how we lovingly care for ourselves. And of course, it's hard to say no sometimes. It's very uncomfortable. The unspoken rules of society say it's impolite to walk away. To get up in the middle of a meditation class or psychic reading or uh, a book talk, 
Yet I've walked out of readings, massages, meditation classes, book talks. I've cut off from or put boundaries on relationships with people who I've seen are boundary violators. This is my way of taking care of myself. Yet I think boundaries are hard for people who consider their self spiritual who, or who are on a spiritual path. There's something about being spiritual that, you know, says we're all one and we're all connected, right? And, and so there really is no separation in spirit. So on an ultimate level, that, that is true. That doesn't necessarily mean we need to uh, go into other people's ick. <laughs> we don't need to be wide open. So many times people who get into healing professions or spirit or go on a spiritual journey and, and undertake a spiritual path, um, grow, also grow up in families that regularly violate our boundaries. And so they never instill that sense in us that we have a right to have them. They never instill that sense in us that um, to even know or identify what boundaries are, you know, what do they mean for us? And how we regularly were put in ex positions where we were not protected or felt unsafe because we were told uh, we weren't allowed to have boundaries. So we can also be shamed by the very same people we look up to in life, um, our spiritual teachers, our wise gurus, for having them, unfortunately, um, for this reason. <laughs> They've, they've had issues too, right? No one's perfect. One very famous astrologer uh, has a style sheet for those who wish to ghostwrite for her. And the rule on that style sheet, among many, is that none of her writers can use the word boundary. Now, boundaries are not negative. Um, they are necessary for emotional health. And knowing yours makes a difference between feeling safe in your own skin or having your confidence undermined by subtle feelings of victimization that come from repeatedly ignoring your no. So be aware of your boundaries. Be aware of your feelings. Be aware of your body and what it's telling you in situations where you're getting a sign that says this doesn't feel good feel empowered to say no, to get up and walk away, and to no longer put yourself in position where other people's poor boundaries undermine your sense of self.